Down from there. Quattro. You could try 25 Menlove Avenue. Whereabouts is that? The second or third along. Thank you. Quarter to eight. Why would anyone give me the wrong address? Quattro. It was clever what he did. Very clever. Telephone calls to the city cafe, made at just the right time. And the meeting at a house that didn't exist. With a man who didn't exist. By the time Wallace came home from his search for Quantro, his plan was finished. It was a good name he chose. All, all of the witnesses remembered it. But he was good at that, you see, dreaming things up. I wasn't the only one who saw him that night. You should ask Lily Lloyd. Julia? interview me. All they wanted to know was had I seen Gordon Parry that night. They thought I was his fiance. Anyway, I was his alibi. And he was with me that night, actually. You allowed out after dark? They weren't in. I never thought he was the one who was responsible. What would his reason be? I was convinced. Whatever John Parks may say. Anyway, worse things have happened since. I don't give it much thought anymore. I've got so many calls to make. Mr. Parry is here to see you. Do you feel well enough to speak with him? Um, oh, I'll need my account book. It's, um, it's downstairs. Yes, yes I know. <sighs> Mr. Wallace. 
Why don't you let me go through the list on my own? The more you rest, the sooner you recover. Yes. <laughs> I do feel tired. I want you to know I'm very grateful for your assistance. I hate to neglect my duties. What kind of a world is it if we can't help each other out, eh? I can stay here and quietly go through the list on my own. Don't give it another thought. judge a person's character, the intentions of that person. Which person are you talking about? I mean, in general terms. Julia has fixed opinions regarding the way people are and the way they behave, their motives. Oh, forgive me, Amy. None of this really is your concern. It's just that I find myself able to discuss these things with you. It's all right. Mm. Don't you feel the heat? No, of course you don't. I have a photograph of you standing in front of a palm tree. That would be Calcutta. I expect so. <laughs> Joseph took it. Have you heard from my brother? It's my turn to write. But I have nothing to say. Are you going to light that cigarette? Uh, I don't think one is allowed to smoke in here. Why don't you light it and see? What is it, William? You. You do me the kindness of meeting me here. Kindness. It's just rather selfish of me, that's all. Burdening you with my concerns. Julia is rather innocent. Is that what you mean? No. No, I don't think she is. My darling, it's beautiful. Rather sad. You really like it? Very much. You have a great talent. William, do you ever think of our house in Harrogate? Of course. We had so many friends. As we do here. Who are you thinking of? Amy is our friend. She's more your friend. She regards you as a sister. And you like a brother? I don't seem to speak with anyone anymore. You have your chess tournaments, scientific work, lecturing. It was better before, wasn't it? For you too, hmm? It was just a different time in our lives. Man lives only in the present. And it's no wonder I feel alone. I saw Gordon Parry this afternoon. Really? Mm. Yes. I'm rather concerned. It appears the premiums he's collected do not tally with the entries in my account book. I'm telling you this in confidence. One can make mistakes. Hello, Johnny. 
very nice, Gordon. Mr. Parry. You have to present yourself right. Is the old man around? I haven't seen him. Hey. That's your room and one of these things, eh? Fancy your leg room. Does he let you drive these, does he? Yeah. For the customer. Customer likes them clean, Johnny. What brings you down here? Just killing time. You know me, Johnny. Time's not my master. You're not meant to smoke in here. A lonely traveller am I Without a place to call my own My case is filled with tears And stolen souvenirs If I just had a girl of my own What's that then? Oh, she made it up. You should sing for a living, I reckon. Oh, there's no money in it. But I've never been asked. Yeah. How's the Swift? Is she running all right? I'm getting rid of that car. Do you want to buy it? If I had money. I saw Lily Lloyd in Friday Road. Well? Still working out with her then? Yeah. Two months is a long time for you. She's a beauty though. Isn't she? Yeah. I'm going to stick by that girl. Walking out. Been reading too many novels, Johnny. Extraordinary weather we're having, Mr. Wallace. But it's always like this. Mr. Lewis, well? He looks for work, which is more than I can say for some around here. One must have hope. According to my accounts, you're currently two weeks in arrears. I paid it. I paid the young fella. Then the fault is ours. Passes by and I can't see why I'm so blue. It must be you. I wouldn't be sad. I wouldn't be mad if you felt this way too. If I knew what was happening to me, I could explain it to you true. But in my confusion, I'll harbor delusion until these strange feelings pass through. I wouldn't be sad, I wouldn't be mad if you felt this way too. One intriguing consequence of the time dilation effect is the ability, theoretically, to travel through time. If you think again of our two subjects with their electric lamps. One, close to the speed of light. The other is stationary. traveller might circumnavigate the galaxy to return and find himself thousands of years in the future. Now, consider starlight.
My darling. Oh, William, you're so quiet. You seem very happy. Why shouldn't I be? Julia. Are you coming to bed? Yes. In a moment. Love made a fool out of me. It pierced my heart and changed my destiny. I saw reasons why. My senses said goodbye. Oh my, won't you tell me why you're doing this? To me. Hello, Lily. Rudy Valley. I even look like him. Stood here. Could have been picked up by anybody. Anyone you wanted. There's only one who loves you. If you loved me, you'd take more care of me. You know what time I finished playing? Well, who's such a time? Happens. Freeze to death. Where shall we go? The Royal. Your dad gave me some more money then. Not your business where it comes from. Just where it's going to. Me? It's after they asked me if you still going with me. What did you tell him? I hope I wasn't lying. What did you tell him? That you were mine. You can see into the future. Oh, my, won't you tell me why you're doing this to me? So many nice things. Where's this house? In Harrogate, where I used to live. Where we used to live. It's lovely. Did you have a garden? Oh, a beautiful garden. Why do you live here, then? I came all the way from China. It's frightening, isn't it?
I think it's rather more serious than that. I make mistakes. I know. You have made false entries in the account book. You can pay it back. There's no problem. Why do you do it? It really doesn't matter. They get their money. I don't think the Prudential would view it in quite the same light. Is that why you asked me here? An opportunity for a talk. I could help you. It doesn't have to be this way. And which way is that? If you want to report me, that's your business. Or maybe there's another reason why you want to have a go at me. What are you thinking of? Anyway, the proof already questioned me. I expect I'll be leaving shortly. I am sorry. Not much of a job, is it? Was it necessary? Julia Parry has been stealing from his employer. And you would have reported him? You cannot condone what he has done. It's you who are always saying we should not judge people. I hope you won't regret it. Julia, I really would like to throw out those old newspapers. I'll sort them out in the morning. As you wish. A man named Quantro. Who is Quantro? We telephoned it a while before you came in this evening. He said it was a business matter and he wishes to see you tomorrow evening at about 7.30. 25 men of Gardens East. Would you carry on working in that filthy country? And let your wife live so far away? Not a choice I should like to make. I don't think you would. What does Joseph want? 
You could get a job here. And could you? <laughs> yes, look at me. Working for an insurance company. Now, I'd be in Malaya myself if I still had my health. A note of dissent. I'd be more concerned for Julia's health if I were you. Oh. That permanent cold she seems to have, the house is damp. Oh, I don't know. No, I suspect it's not entirely physiological. Must persuade her to take the air. Yes, we were thinking. I'll talk to her about it. Time flies so quickly in your company. I must leave. I have a business appointment this evening. A Mr. Qualtro. Did I mention him? Why can't you tell me what's happening? Should I ask Julia? When I was ill, a young man helped me on my round. Gordon Perry. William, he's a boy. Maybe you should both go away. We have spoken about that. Thank you, Amy. I sometimes feel this is my own home. I'm glad. When shall I see you again? Soon. attractive this way. Have you been crying? No. Perhaps I shouldn't visit Mr. Quattro after all. Oh, you must. If he chose you, it was for a good reason. And we need the money. Well. doesn't live here. Then they say men love gardens east. Yes, no, I'm sorry to have bothered you. Excuse me. Can you tell me the whereabouts of men love gardens east? East? There's a north, a south, and a west, but no east. Is there something wrong, sir? I had a telephone message from a Mr. Qualtro. 25 men love gardens east. Qualtro? Yes. I had his name written down for me. There. Uh, Qualtro.
Have you heard anything unusual tonight? No. Why? What's happened? Well, I've been to the front door and the back. They're both locked against me. Try the door again. I mean, she won't be out. She's such an awful cold. It opens now. We'll wait here while you see everything's all right. Julia? Mr. Wallace, nothing must be touched. Watch him, sir. Superintendent. Thank you, Mrs. Johnson. Did you get a statement? Do you want Wallace in here, sir? Plenty of time. Four pound notes taken. Suspect. According to the word, Mr. Wallace. Don't get there before me, Sergeant. Why would a thief put the lid back on the box and put the box back up where he found it? That's right. Robbery? He didn't touch the money upstairs. Hmm. Take a measurement from the floor to the top of the shelves. It's today's. Was it delivered? And the milk? See what time it's arrived. Culture. 
Is this your coat, Mr. Wallace? I underwent an operation in Shanghai to repair the kidney, but it was later removed. This was in London? Yes. Next, Yorkshire. I was the liberal agent for Ripon for five years. That was where I met Julia. I was not fit enough to serve in the war. When did you move to your present address? 1915. I was by then an employee of the Prudential Assurance Company. Earning less money, I expect. Than you did in the Far East. No. Although it doesn't go as far. What do you mean? One's quality of life. Mr. Wallace, when I asked you whether the Macintosh belonged to you, why did you take so long to answer? I recognized it. I recognize that it is important to be precise in these matters. Do you think your wife knew the person who murdered her? I'm certain of it. Oh? Well, there was no apparent sign of a break-in. The front door was bolted. I can see you've given this some thought. I wish some of my detectives were as bright as you, Mr. Wallace. Well, perhaps between us we can find some motive for this murder. What about theft? The cash box was very carefully replaced by the criminal. Someone meticulous and tall. He could have stood on a chair. Go on. Is there something more you'd like to tell us, Mr. Wallace? Are you sure? What about him? You must have your own thoughts about what's happened. It would help me if you did more than simply answer my questions. Julia had no enemies. People are not always killed by their enemies. when people are close. I am sorry. Yeah. Putting you to all this trouble. What do they expect you to tell them, for goodness sake? About you. Me. You must try and get some sleep. Uh, uh. <sighs> I close my eyes. <sighs> I always thought I'd be the first to die. She was everything to me. Everything. Yet you had your differences. Faith. Or rather, your wife's faith. She, a devout Catholic, you an agnostic. Devout is hardly the word. She went to church. I encouraged her to meet people. It didn't mean very much. Not to you, huh? Weren't you above all that? Didn't you feel that in some way your wife was inferior to yourself? Quite the opposite. Is it cold in here? I understand you have to ask me these things. You felt you'd come down in the world. It wasn't me who felt that. Did you have some tea? Marston's. I don't like you going to that place. They're perfectly kind. Oh, as they can be. Julia, come here. What is it? It's wrong to judge people in the way they live. 
We must first know the facts of their existence. Is this another reprimand? We're all of us working to the same end. Or a lecture. Julia. It's all right. I'm not one of your pupils. You look feverish. Please don't stay up too late. No. No. Maybe something you ate at that place. Why do you keep mentioning Gordon Parry? I merely answer your questions. It's your investigation. A friend of my late wife's. He collected premiums, which he did not pay. He is engaged to a Miss Lily Lloyd. And so on. You requested names. You didn't give me details of all the others. We knew him better than the others. My illness... I have explained all this. I was with Miss Lily Lloyd. Yes, I have that here, sir. That's right. I can't believe Wallace was capable of doing it. Such a reserved man. I don't think we need another statement, Mr. Parry. I'm afraid it's not really uh, so many rules. Where in the world would I go? You can't stay in Wolverton Street with your memories. Oh, wherever I went. No, I see no reason to move. I have good neighbors. You obviously don't read the newspapers. It's convenient for my area of work. You are so like Joseph. If you don't bend with the wind. So stubborn. You don't have a family. You could travel. That was always your love. Oh, yes. Yes, maybe. Maybe in the future. They don't know how to conduct an investigation. <laughs> Haven't a clue. He's clever. He thinks he's cleverer than us. Strategist who knows all the right moves. But too many alibis. Can you get a bit nearer than that? I'm sorry, but I can't. It is very important to me. I should like to know if you could get closer to it than that. I'm sorry, but I can't. I've just left the police. They have no evidence at all, you know. Very glad to hear that. It must be a relief for you. Why didn't you tell me you'd spoken to Mr. Beatty? It was a personal inquiry. Why was it important to you? You asked him about the telephone message he gave you at the chess club. That's correct. You told him the time was important. The time was important. What did you mean? I had an idea. And it's all. It was indiscreet of me.
Your sister-in-law, Amy. Was she better company than your wife? What are you trying to make me say? I'm just trying to get a reaction, Mr. Wallace. I have to say, I've seen people more affected by the death of a loved one. Why should I display what I feel? Some of us can't help it. Was she able to provide you with something that you couldn't get from your wife? Some kind of sympathy? You should deal in facts. It means nothing. Why did you speak to the reporter? He said he was a police detective. He looked unprepossessing enough to be one. Anyway, I told him nothing. Honoring your reputation like this, I feel responsible. What harm? Police have visited again. Superintendent Moore? Asking which persons Julia might have admitted to the house. I wanted to know about Gordon Parry. What it is that you have against him. <laughs> He's such a foolish man. Johnson. We thought you were staying with your sister-in-law. That is correct. I have merely come to collect one or two of my wife's things. I've not been charged. I don't listen to the rumors. Jealousy, a useless emotion which one must not acknowledge. Where do they all go to you? These feelings you deny. We must act reasonably. Stifled by reason. And be honest with it, I suppose. What is there without honesty? You tell Julia about our meetings. How many meetings? She wouldn't understand. Julia misconstrues. Am I misconstruing? I'll tell you, Lily, there isn't enough love anywhere you look, anywhere. 
they're dying for it. And when people see what they haven't got, they'll do anything they can to make sure you can't have it neither. There's no one else, then. <laughs> there you go again. What? It's just... Oh, I've never suspected you. With all men's eyes upon you. But then... You wouldn't notice that. Would you? Killer. Change your clothes, leave the house. It's not impossible when you really want something. Wallace was a tall man. There'd be a lot of blood on his trousers. Why would he wear this? If he was going to change his clothes anyway. To confuse us. That's what he's trying to do. The more elaborate he can make his story... It still doesn't give him much time. If the milk boy was speaking to Mrs. Wallace at 6.45... Who was he? I think you should have a word with that boy. Impress upon him the seriousness of this case, the need for accuracy. 6.35. Now, that would give Wallace 15 minutes to kill his wife, clean up, and get to the tram stop. Journey time, 17 minutes. First sighting on the second tram, 7.06. 6.35. Tell the boy he doesn't want to go making a fool of himself, getting the time wrong. No mistake, Superintendent. Can we assume she was dead by 6.45? I approximate 6.30 to 7 o'clock. So, of course, yes. But if I could rely on 6.45, it would confirm my suspicions. It'd be less misleading if you see my point. It is impossible to state an exact time. My suspicions. I trust you mean Mr. Wallace. Six forty-five. The evidence is there. You've got to be clear-headed about this. You'll go before the whole court, and they'll ask you the same question I'm asking you now. Six. I don't really know. Now, that's not going to help anyone, is it? Eh? What would your friends think about that, then? Six. Thirty-five. As long as you're sure. Boy. You were still in the house. No, in the rear entry before I turned into Richmond Park. I saw the boy then. 6.30? No, later. Oh, but he says 6.35. Isn't that odd? I cannot answer for the boy's statement. Nonetheless, it seems you allowed yourself a full hour to make the journey to Menlove Gardens. In which case, why did you run for the tram? I cannot run because of my ill health. I hurried because... Hurried, yes. I did not know how long it would take to reach my destination. In point of fact, you could have left your house as late as uh, ten minutes to seven and still been on the tram at six minutes past seven. I hardly think so. Oh, we've already established that it's possible. 
Which begs the question, why did it take you so long? This is a fruitless line of inquiry. Do you want to make a statement about anyone else on this list? No. And your wife knew all these persons? And would have opened the door to any of them? Yes. Even after dark? Yes. Even when she was alone? Evidently. Should I suspect anyone on that list? One has thoughts. Mm -hmm. Someone your wife knew, but you did not? No. Because you knew your wife so well. I'd like you to go to number 29 Wolverton Street, Mr. Wallace. You will be met there. Oh, I'm sure it is an inconvenience. As soon as possible. Does this journey signify you're getting somewhere with your investigation? That's right, sir. Superintendent Moore has the details. like entering an unfamiliar room in which there is no light. Apparently no light. If one remains in that room, forms begin to present themselves. In time, everything can be seen. Do you smile, I wonder, because I have misunderstood how you did it or because I do understand? Mr. Wallace. On the evening before the murder, you left your home to play a prearranged game of chess. This was at 7.15. It will say in my statement. It does. When you arrived at this telephone box, was it occupied? I really couldn't say. I don't think it was, no. So you didn't have to wait before you used it? The call to the city cafe was made from this telephone at 20 minutes past seven. Your call was logged, Mr. Paltrow.
William Herbert Wallace, you are indicted, and the charge against you is murder, in that on the 20th day of January, 1931, at Liverpool, you murdered Julia Wallace. How say you, William Herbert Wallace? Are you guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. That I should attack and kill her is to all who knew us unthinkable and unbelievable. All the more so when it must be realized I cannot gain one possible advantage by committing such a deed. On the contrary, in actual fact, I have lost a loyal and devoted comrade. My home life has been completely broken up, and everything I hold dear has been torn from me. A man might perfectly well commit a crime wearing a raincoat with nothing else on, leaving the raincoat there. One of the most famous criminal trials was of a man who committed the crime when he was naked. The Crown suggests to you that in this case, whoever did this deed was taking elaborate precautions. This is not a case where you will consider any verdict other than murder, foul and unpardonable. This elderly, lonely woman literally hacked to death. Apparently no reason at all. If you think that the case is clearly proved against this man, that he brutally and wantonly sent her to her account, it will be your duty to call him to his account. The Crown can suggest no motive, but supposing to take an extreme case, you saw a murder committed. You'd be unimpressed if someone said to you afterwards, but there was no motive for doing it. You'd say, I can't help that, I saw it. So if, although there is no motive apparent to the Crown or apparent to you, the facts seem to you to point irresistibly to the conclusion that he did it, motive has nothing to do with the question. Rigor mortis? The stiffening that follows death was present in the upper of the left arm and in the neck. The head was turned to the left and fixed by post-mortem rigidity on the neck by about one o'clock. That is approximately two hours afterwards. Then while the head was on the floor, the blood would go upwards? Yes, and away from the assailant. You're speculating? I am. You are simply guessing? No, not guessing. It depends entirely where he stood. Yes, it does. Very well. I have put my case to you on there. Now, with regard to the time of death, uh, when did you first think that the time of death was important? Immediately I examined the body. Well, that was your first thought. It was a thought. One of your first thought. A thought, how long has this woman been dead? Not making notes. Well, you have a good memory, I suppose. I have. How far had the rigor mortis progressed? It had got to the right shoulder. Uh, by 10 to 11? By 10 to 11. Uh, I am putting 10 to 11. Oh. Was that all? I was not looking at the times as I went on. I did not take the time on any other occasion, except when I went to the house. No temperatures were taken at any time during the evening? No. Nope. Although the test known as the rectal temperature is uh, considered to be the best test. That was not done? That was not done. Uh, would not this examination also have given some indication of the, of the last time that Mrs. Wallace was still alive? That is possible. It is possible. And yet we have been denied that possibility. In fact, the time of death is incalculable. My opinion is, was that the woman had been dead for four hours. Now you say you first saw the body at ten to ten? Yes. Well, then if she was still alive at half past six, 
Your opinion is wrong. Is it not? Yes. So, 10 to 6. And doesn't that illustrate to you how fallible your test is? No, it does not. I am still of that opinion. Do you think that the milk boy imagined seeing her alive? I do not want to think about the milk boy and what he saw at all. I'd paid out a reasonable amount during the week, so there was comparatively little in the cash box. Yes, but normally on a Tuesday, uh, the box would contain the greatest sum for the week. Yes. I thought you had these details. Yeah, surely. Any employee of the Prudential would know this, and about the money. Yes. Mr. Wallace, was there anyone with whom you worked whom you could suspect of having entered your home that night? Did he seem excited? Or did he seem calm, collected, or what? At first, he was quite collected. What do you mean by at first? Before my husband left for the police. And then? And then twice he showed his emotion. He put his hands to his head. He sobbed. How long was it that he showed this emotion by sobbing? Momentary. Merely the process of change. I don't know. Julia'd go mad if she saw all of this. It's very difficult to judge, of course, what is passing in other people's minds. He was too quiet, too collected for a person whose wife had been killed in the way described. He was not nearly so affected as I was myself. I formed an idea of the mental condition of the person who had committed this crime. I have seen crimes, many of them this kind, and I know what the mental condition is. I know it was not an ordinary case of assault or serious injury. It was a case of frenzy. Now, if this is the work of a maniac, and he is a sane man, he did not do it. Is that right? He may be sane now. If he has been sane all his life, and he is sane now, this will be some momentary frenzy. The mind is very peculiar. You tell Julia of our meetings? Our many meetings? She wouldn't understand. Julia misconstrues. Thank you. It's difficult keeping in touch. As a matter of fact, I've been writing a good deal to Julia. Though she's no longer alive. I've, uh, I've written a list of books. They have a jolly good library here, but sadly, not what I would like most. They take good care of my interests here. Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. Did Julia ever mention her young man?
We'll all miss her, I think. You told the police. I had to get home. I sensed something was wrong. If you've been given a right address, of course you need not have made a number of inquiries from passers-by. One would have been sufficient. You follow what I mean? Yes. The wrong address is essential for the creation of the alibi. Do you follow that? No. I do not follow you. Thank you. Uh, where might I see a directory? You can see one at the post office. Good. Thank you. Quarter to eight. Why would anyone give me the wrong address? If you'd been told men love gardens west, the first inquiry would have landed you there. Yes? If you've been told of an address which does not exist, you can ask seven or eight people, every one of whom would be witnesses where you were. You wore the Macintosh to escape being spattered with blood. If there was an unknown murderer, he has covered up his traces. Can you say it is absolutely impossible there was no such person? But putting that aside as not being the real question, can you say, taking all this evidence as a whole, bearing in mind the strengths of the case put forward by the police and the prosecution, that you are satisfied beyond all reasonable doubt that it was the hand of the prisoner and no other hand that murdered this woman. <laughs> if I knew what was happening to me, I could explain it to you true. But in my confusion, I'll harbor delusion until these strange feelings pass through. I wouldn't be sad. Have you anything to say why judgment of death should not be pronounced upon you? And why you should not die according to the law? I am not guilty. That is all. I cannot say anything more. We do so many things without knowing what the consequences will be. How can I possibly regret what he or I might have done? He was only out to have a good time. That's what people couldn't understand about him. So, are you allowed out after dark? They weren't in. Where should we go? He was full of secrets. <laughs> he never knew what was going to happen. But I didn't mind that. He was exciting to be with. I loved him. And I was pleased that he wanted to be with me. 
But he loved them all. That's how I knew it would never come to anything. It actually hurts me to think about it. Hello, Johnny. I, uh... I need you to do something for me. Something legal. I only need the car cleaner, for Christ's sake. You want? Yeah. Well, can you reach from there? Yeah. Mr. Munro holds out great hopes for your appeal. Yes, he... His letters convey great optimism, I think. I owe him a great deal. Possibly my life. We shall see. I don't intend to tell you how I've been keeping. I've always had the highest regard for you, Amy. I don't think my brother understands what he's foregoing living all those many miles away. I'm very happy you've agreed to handle all my affairs. Everything is in order. Monroe has been fully instructed. Shouldn't steal too much of your time. It's what Lily doesn't tell you that's important. She won't say the only time she saw him was much later on. He went to her house in the garage. I know that for a fact. We don't want that, Johnny. If anyone saw that, that would hang me. It doesn't mean a thing. I, I, know, I know why she lied. Mm. <laughs> because she was keen on him. Sure, but that wasn't it. Their reputation went with his. There had been enough talk already to get involved in the Wallace business. She wasn't having any of that. For you. Our well, secret, Johnny. It's one thing knowing what you should do. It's not always what you end up doing. I've just received notification of the day of execution. It's to be Tuesday, May the 12th. Three weeks. I've only just been informed. More notice is usually given, but not on this occasion, I'm afraid. I should like more writing paper, if that can be arranged. You will receive whatever concessions I can allow during your stay here. I'm afraid I've been unable to get hold of the book you mentioned to me, but I'll do everything in my power to obtain it for you. I don't want it to be any trouble. I won't waste any more of your precious time. Good day, Mr. Wallace. Could continue the game some other time if you'd like. Oh, if you're not in the mood. It's not that. <laughs> Don't give up so easily. Come on. You're not using your rooks as well as you might. Your queen's rook. Well, I knew Wallace was going to hang. I, I, I did at least go to the police. What a waste of time that was. They already had them, man.
Never a soldier, no. I had height, but nothing else. Courage? Mm. We'd all like to believe we have courage. You have. I've been with quite a few in these cells. Never met anyone who took it like you. Ah. A fear of death is not difficult to overcome. If one has a doctrine, does it actually matter when we die? A year here or there? No. The tragedy is we form sentimental attachments. Nothing happens to any man that he is not formed by nature to bear. When for the fourth time, on the eve of impending struggle, death stretched forth his hand and took from me a little son, Rome noted only my unmoved face. My countenance never changed in grief. I have trained myself to be a Stoic. For 40 years, I have drilled myself in iron control and prided myself on never displaying an emotion outwardly in public. in order to justify a verdict of guilty and therefore this appeal will be allowed and the conviction quashed. You must have been a very clever man. I had no idea you could appear like that once they'd sentenced you. Oh, he was indeed. Fine lawyer. His picture was in the echo. I've still got it, if you didn't get a chance to see. Oh, thank you. I only wish some of your neighbours believed in my innocence as vehemently as you do, Mrs. Lewis. Give them time. The great healer. Good day. Mr. Wallace, how are you keeping? There's a matter I'd like to discuss with you. you can spare me some time, mate. No, 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 not now. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you someday. I'll give you something to think about. Wallace, quite true. Those things will go in here. I can put up shelves. Yeah, there was a most interesting piece in yesterday's Times about the new electron microscope. Did you see it? <laughs> the detail is extraordinary. One doesn't look at the specimen itself. One looks at the pattern created by the reflected rays.
I believe that one day we shall see and understand everything. That I should attack and kill her is to all who knew us unthinkable and unbelievable. All the more so when it must be realized I cannot gain one possible advantage by committing such a deed. On the contrary, in actual fact, I have lost a loyal and devoted comrade. My home life has been completely broken up, and everything I hold dear has been torn from me. Thank you.